The crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama, November the 3rd, 2022. Tonight, making babies, walking sticks, or stick insects. I would like you atheists to explain how this evolved. Uh, you haven't done any of them so far. I keep giving them all these targets to shoot at. It's a target-rich environment. Had a debate last night with, uh, let's see, where, where'd I go here? There we go. No. Yeah, we're on Rumble and Odyssey and a bunch of places. Had a debate last night with attorney Matthew Farrell up in Canada. Uh, oh, I don't want all that. Let's see. Oh, there he was. Okay. You can contact him if you'd like the debate and say, hey, uh, he wants to do it again. Does he want a third round three? Yeah, he probably does. His evidence for evolution is cancer and or tumors. That's how we evolve from an amoeba. Anyway, okay. I'd like to see a thousand young people or more start a ministry, even a small science center in your house or a traveling science center in the back of a car or van or something. Do something for the Lord, okay? There's a war going on. Find something to do. If you're not going to shoot, carry bullets, take care of the wounded, do something. Anyway, DAL's baby bunnies. We got all kinds of ba the baby lamb. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff to come here. Let's see. Where are we at? Oh, I did snails last week. Tonight, it's uh, that's October. Never mind. This is November. It's been a busy day, okay? And yet, it's been a busy week. I had to take down trees. We got these stupid pine bark beetles eating our trees. How many have we taken down total so far? About 20, 20. 20. I took two down yesterday. I was up 50 in the 50 foot man lift standing on top of the second level of the bucket. Would have been a great video for doing stupid things, you know? And uh, the tree, tree limb kicked back. Look at this. Hit me right in the arm there. Oh. 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 And right on the head right there. See? That's where a thought struck me. Anyway, uh, Jesus told us to consider the lilies, consider the ravens. Why? There's things you can learn from nature that will draw you closer to the Lord. That's what we're trying to do here. We've covered all kinds of animals. We've given you chance after chance, you atheists. Please, come on. Step up to the plate. Show us how this evolved. If you want to help us to open for free, join our 777 Club. Go to drdino.com, D-R-D-I-N-O, and click the yellow button on there someplace. And make any checks if you want to do a check to CSE, Creation Science Evangelism. Get our video series. Get our Woe series, What on Earth is About to Happen. Let's see. No advisories tonight. Nothing you got to worry about. Okay, God blessed them. First chapter of the Bible, he blessed them. He said, be fruitful and multiply. It's a blessing to have children, okay? He blessed them. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. God blessed Noah when they got off the ark. Be fruitful and multiply. So God created a male and female. There's only two genders of all the animals except for humans. Now there's 50, what, 58 of them now? Complete, complete morons, okay? Male and female, male and female. Okay, let's see. That's what the Bible says pretty clearly, right? So that's a great blessing. He gave the command for all form, all life forms to make babies, and he gave the needed equipment and the drive to do so, okay? And he made an amazing variety of ways for this to be done. Amazing variety. And you atheists haven't answered any of them. I think God made amazing variety just as another way to say, you idiot, can't you believe in me? You're going to have no excuse judgment day. So many varieties of ways that plants and animals make babies. you got to wonder, this, can't, this cannot have evolved slowly, piece by piece. David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Why can't you praise God for the insects and for the flies and for the everything? Praise God, okay? The anglerfish, and nobody answered that one. The tardigrade, and honeybee, watermelon, starfish, playing mantis, mudskippers. You can go back over my uh, program, guys. Frogs, the ants, octopus. Nobody did it. The sponge, why aren't you answering them? The barnacle, the fly trap, the flatworm, nobody answered it. The sea devil, the blue banded gooby, why didn't you answer that one? How they make babies. The electric eel, the seahorse, clubbed wing mannequins, they didn't do that one. The right whales, the wrong whales, the left whales, you didn't do any of them. Frilled shark, the blue whale, green whale, pink whale, none of them. Banana slug, golden plover, now there's a cool one, okay? Nobody answered. Porcupine, Tarantula, you study how they make babies. I'm just wanting a scientific answer. You guys claim you believe in science. Well, come on, you keyboard warriors, step up to the plate. Tell me how the platypus evolved its method of making babies, or the kangaroo, or the bacteria, mm -hmm. or the Komodo dragon, or the hippopotamus. Nobody did that one. Uh, the condor, the uh, axolotl, axol, axolotl, that's right, I forgot to pronounce it. Nobody did that one. The cichlid, nobody did that one. Come on, guys, the sea slug. Now, there's a cool one. Why? Because you, there is no evolutionary explanation. 
It had to be designed. You don't get it. But if your evolution and religion isn't true, that changes everything. Yes, ma'am, it sure does. Yep. Mm -hmm. The kiwi, nobody did that one. The tortoise beetle, the dandelion, the love bug. We got those all over here. The short beak echidna, and we didn't do the long beak. Answer either one you'd like on that one, okay? Short beak, long beak, the special wasp, the snail last week, and now the stick insect. I'd like to know how this evolved. I predict tonight, prediction. You won't do this one either. God said, let the creatures bring forth after their kind. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw it was good. That's all they've ever done. God said, let there be light. He just spoke the light into existence. He spoke the atmosphere into existence. He spoke the waters into existence. God didn't lift a finger to make any of that. He just spoke, okay? And he spoke the grass into existence and all the fruit trees. He just spoke. He didn't have to do anything. Just speak. And every molecule lined up. But when it comes to humans, he hand-formed them. There are 3,000 species of stick insects, ranging from half inch long to 13 inch long. Pretty good sized critters there. Some species of stick insects can reproduce without a mate, parthenogenesis, resulting in exact copies of the mother. Hmm. Stick insects, or we call them walking sticks, feed on vegetation and are one of the most popular forms of insect pest. There are all kinds of insects in the world. If you want to come visit Dinosaur Adventure Land, and see some of the amazing insects we've got here in our collection. The beetles, the, uh, it, you'd almost think they were designed if you didn't know better. Or if you'd like to see a stick insect that's pretty good size. Uh, I believe there was a designer. Okay, you got him? Oh, 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 there we go. All right, thank you, sir. Back to where it was there. Okay, there are 925,000 identified species of insects. That's a lot. No, I didn't have to take insects on the ark. The Bible says, in whose nostrils is the breath of life. They, all these insects breathe through their skin. And they can survive a flood just fine on floating log mats and floating debris, stuff like that. It's okay. There's a walking stick. That's the head up there. You really, really think this happened by chance. Nobody designed it. They not only look like a stick, they act like a stick. How does a stick act? Well, if the wind is blowing, it moves around. So they can feel the wind moving, and they'll start waving back and forth. Who taught them that? They aren't defenseless. Insects aren't venomous. These stick, stick insects aren't venomous. Some will regurgitate a nasty substance to put a bad taste in their predator's mouth. How long did it take for that to evolve? See, for a long time, they didn't have that, so they all died. All of them died. None of them lived. Yeah, for a long time. Others, reflex bleed, oozing a foul-smelling hemolymph lymph from joints in their body. Who taught them that? Some um, have spines on their legs, and they can poke their enemy to put pain on them, okay? Stick insects even direct a chemical spray like tear gas, tear gas at a offender. Huh. Stick insects, walking sticks. There are some pretty big ones out there. Bobby, we need one of these in our science center, don't we? Yeah, from Borneo. That's a big one. Do they have wings? Maybe. Depends on the species. Some of the most commonly kept species appear wingless. Other stick insects may have full-grown wings. Some might have little more than short wing-like stumps. There's a great variety when it comes to wing size. Even when the wings are fully developed, they aren't always completely functional. Some insects can use their wings to fly and glide. For others, the wings are quite literally just for show. Even small wing stick insects can use their wings in a dimatic display to scare off predators. That's the last ditch offense. You know, it's called a bluff. Ah, scare the guy, okay? Flash their wings at them. There we go. Some of the stick insects look kind of like leaves. They're considered the same category. In general, stick insects don't fly. Only the males of certain stick insect species can fly. The main reason for flying is to find a mate. As a result, they can cover quite impressive distances. Worth noting that of the 3,000 in stick insect species, only 40% have full wings, and only 40% of those, half of them, can fly. There's the wings on a stick insect. Well, you'd almost think it was designed if you didn't know better. See, you know better. It evolved. Yeah, of course it evolved. Nobody made that. Over millions of years, it slowly made itself. Is there anything else I can say? Joe, what...
What would convince them? Nothing convinced Pharaoh. He didn't get it, did he? Not all stick insects stay brown. They can change color like a chameleon. Yeah, depending on the background they're at rest on. Stick insects may wear bright colors on their wings, but keep these flamboyant features tucked away. When a bird or other predator approaches, the insect flashes its vibrant wings, then hides them again, leaving the predator confused and unable to locate its target. Whoa, where'd he go? And then hide the wings. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where's that bug? Ah, let's go find something else. Can they regrow their wings? Stick insects go through a complete metamorphosis, start off like a caterpillar from an egg to a caterpillar type of worm and then into an insect. Complete metamorphosis is a complete change. Some only go through partial metamorphosis, some insects do. But as they go through these stages and come out of their cocoon, they can regenerate broken parts. Ah. So, same thing happens with missing limbs. If a stick insect has to regenerate serious wounds, all the energy used to grow big functional wings gets diverted to growing lost tissue. So they end up, can't fly. That one can't. Stay, look at the head on that thing. The eyes will, will amaze you. It's a pretty good size one. Imagine, eat that for supper. You really think nobody designed this? I, I don't understand the atheist mindset. Are you that desperate to ignore God that you'll just say nobody did it? How, stop and think for a minute. I tell people, do you ever think about what you think about? You really think nobody designed this? Oh, yeah. All happened by chance, didn't it? Stick insects mating. The male's a whole lot smaller than the female. Climbs on, has to reach around underneath. There's a long, complicated process for them to mate, okay? This a lady did an excellent video on the topic. Let me get to that one. All right, here. And come over here. I can get it all to work. Cassie's Critters. It's several minutes long. In this video, we'll be discussing the anatomy of the male Statosomatidaritum in full detail via dissection and microscopic photographs. Let's start with the dorsal external anatomy. We will first begin with a quick review of the structures and then move on to more detailed information. Starting from the top and making our way down, we have the head, which features two filiform antennae and three simple eyes. Remember that we are currently only looking at the dorsal structures, so we'll talk about the mouth part. Dorsal meaning the back side instead of the front side, ventral, okay? Parts and the compound eyes later on. And then, after the head, we have the thorax, which is separated into three parts, the prothorax, the mesothorax, and the metathorax and includes the fore and hind wings. Moving further down the insect, we also have the abdomen, which is separated into nine segments and includes the anus and genitalia. Now let's get into more descriptive details about the dorsal external view, starting from the head. Each antenna has 23 segments, some smaller than others, the first and last four segments being the smallest. The whole antenna is on average 4.5 centimetres in length. Keep in mind, nobody made this. It made itself over millions of years, probably billions of years. I wonder when they're going to go to trillions. Have they gone there yet? Not yet. Okay. They'll get there. The segment of the antenna is called the scape, which is mounted into a specialized socket, which enables the insect to move the antenna. So whoa, whoa, whoa. Specialized? That, that hints at design, lady. You're not allowed to use design or you won't get published in peer-reviewed journals. You should say this has a socket that evolved for the antenna to move around. Yeah, you got to use the word evolved. The hole. The second segment is called the pedicle. This very small segment contains the Johnson's organ, which is a collection of sensory cells that detects motion in the flagellum. So it has a special organ in its antenna to detect motion. Now that took a long time to evolve. Just that was a long time. But hey, it did it. After all, they're here. I mean, what, what other proof do you need? There it is. Okay. The remaining antenna segments, called flagellomeres, make up the flagellum. The entire antenna is covered with small hairs called sensory setae, which helps the insect locate its surroundings. The antennae are the most fragile part of the insect, so it's very common for them to break during the lifespan of the insect. Sometimes they will just get damaged slightly, 
and when the insect kills, you create an abnormal growth, just like this example. Now let's talk about the three simple eyes called ocelli. Each of these eyes compose of a single lens and an extended retina. They each have a wide field of view of 150 degrees or more, and they have as many as 10,000 receptors. 10,000 receptors to receive the light in this little eye on the head of a bug. 10,000, and all those receptors have to be connected to the brain. And his brain ain't that big. And his brain is reading all this data and making decisions what to do with it. And it took billions of years for that to evolve. Yeah, billions, billions. However, they are profoundly out of focus, with the retina much too close to the lens. This is because they are used as horizon detectors, enabling the insect to make fast corrections during flight. High spatial frequency clutter such as leaves and branches are removed from the insect's ocellar vision due to the defocus, allowing the receptors to respond to changes in the overall distribution of light in the sky. This finishes up the dorsal external anatomy of the head. Now we can move on to the dorsal external anatomy of the thorax. The first segment of the thorax is called the prothorax. The dorsal view of the prothorax is bare, containing no major structures. It is the smallest structure of the thorax, and both the prothorax joints that connect it to the head and the mesothorax are flexible. See, for millions of years, they weren't flexible. They couldn't turn their head around. They all died because they couldn't see the predator coming. All of them died until finally they evolved that joint. Yeah. The flexible head joint allows the insect to freely move its head around for easier food intake and better vision. The flexible joint that connects it to the mesothorax enables the insect to be able to break and push out of their old exoskeleton joint of You know, they grow, on, they, they're growing, but the outside skin won't grow. So they're growing inside their skin until they just split the skin and come out. How did that evolve? For more information about the multi-process, check out our video called The Complete Multi-Process of the Stick Insect Extatosoma tiarata. The link will be in the description. The mesothorax is a bit more interesting as it contains two forewings. They are strengthened by many veins and the whole wing is very small and covers the joint of the hind wings. Because of this, it is speculated that their major function is to protect this joint. Now see, all the, the veins in these little tiny wings, like the Hamas tunnels, they all happen by chance. Nobody dug those tunnels and nobody made those veins to stiffen the wings. It's amazing what evolution can do, isn't it? I, I'm amazed at the whole, I, I'm just, you marvel, wow. Look what billions of years can do. The last segment of the thorax is called the metathorax and it contains the long hind wings that are used for flight. It is the largest segment of the thorax and the joint that connects it to the mesothorax is slightly flexible, but the joint that connects it to the abdomen is fused which disables any movement. It's fused because the wing goes past that joint and the wing would bend and it'd be hard on the wing if it could bend all the time. It's almost like it was designed, but no, we know it wasn't designed. The hind wings contain many long veins, which gives the wing a sturdy structure and helps the wing fold neatly when the insect is not in flight. Oh, I forgot, for millions of years, they only had the left wing. And then they finally decided we need a right wing. I think our government would be much better without the left wing, but that's okay. This finishes up the... Th uh, Joe, are they going to ban our channel for that? No. <laughs> Thorax, dorsal, external anatomy. Now, let's move on to the abdomen. To get a better look at this part of the insect, I suggest removing the hind wings. Poor guy. The abdomen consists of nine segments, which bear no spines whatsoever. Abdomen segments 7, 8, and 9 make up the genitalia and anus area. The anus is a triangular shaped structure which is usually dark in coloration and it is located at the end of abdominal segment 9. Just at the bottom of the anus, two cirrhi can be observed. 
These act as sensory organs which help the male cetosomatiarium get into position for copulation. So wait, keep in mind, he's on top of her. He has to reach his tail around and feel around to know where to go. How did that evolve? See, for a long time, he just couldn't, he couldn't figure out what to do. So they all died. All of them. Yeah. The ninth abdominal segment is rather flexible and can be lifted up, revealing a light-colored circular pad. This is a suction pad, much like the suction pads on the feet of geckos. During mating, this suction pad is used to hold onto a lobe located on the ventral side of the female's abdomen. So they have to have a suction pad also. Not only does he have sensory organs to find out where to go, he's, once he finds the spot, he can stick with a suction pad. See, for a long time, none of them had that. They all died. They couldn't make any babies. I'd like you atheists to start coming, step up to the plate. Give me an evolution, a scientific, not just a story. Show me how this happened bit by bit, piece by piece. You can't do it. So why don't you give up on your stupid religion? We can, you can watch the rest of Cassie's Corner here. It's really good stuff. I recommend that. I don't know if this is evolution-based or not, but good information on this. Uh, let's see. Right here, here, here. No, no. This one. Okay. Move on here. The male reproductive system in the insect. This is in the tiny little tail of this thing. Back in the tail, and I can't tell if that's a boy or girl, nor, nor do I care. Uh, it has these little bitty organs there. Let's see. It has testicular tube to make the sperm. They have to travel down the vas deferens. Okay, if someone has a vasectomy, they cut those tubes. Okay, the vas deferens. And then it has to go into the ejaculatory duct so that once they get in position and copulate, they can squirt the sperm into the female. Now, for millions of years, they only had parts of these things. I mean, there's like 10 critical parts and they had to get each one at the same, all at the same time. None of them could do it for a long time. They all died. Yep. The female, even more complicated. She's got the ovaries making these eggs and she's going to lay these, but they have to be fertilized. She can make another baby without a male, but if she does it with the male, then they get a mix of the gene pool that keeps the species stronger, okay? And there are different types of ovaries than the different insects. You can read about all them yourself, okay? Stick insects can reproduce without males. Hmm. It's like the Amazonians, you know, they don't need men, able to reproduce almost entirely without males, parthenogenesis. Unmated females produce eggs when mature, become female stick insects, and only produce girls. When a male does manage to mate with a female, there's a 50-50 chance the offspring of that union will be male. A captive female stick insect can produce hundreds of all-female offspring without ever mating. In fact, there are species of stick insects for which scientists have never found any males. Their eggs resemble little seeds. Stick insect mothers aren't the most maternal. They don't take care of their babies. Some stick insects, females, actually make an effort to hide their eggs, sticking them to leaves or bark or placing them in the soil. Typically, they just simply drop the eggs as they walk along on the branches. Just drop the egg off. You're on your own, kid. Bye. See you later. How does he know? How does how does a kid grow up and know to be a stick insect? I mean, who teaches him how to drive? You know, how to go to school, how to read, write. Who teaches him all that stuff? Okay, it's helpful that the eggs resemble seeds, so the carnivorous predators are less likely to take a closer look. Huh? The egg from one variable uh, stick insect species. Female produce eggs about the size of rice grain which usually drop to the forest floor where they remain hidden. Tiny stick insects hatch from the egg three to 12 months later. Just drop the egg off. You know what the chances are of that evolving? How, I bet for a long time they didn't know how to get out of that egg. They wanted out so bad, but they didn't know how. Yeah. The egg's sculpted shape resembling a bit of wood or a seed is probably an evolved form or dis of disguise. You have to praise evolution or it doesn't get published, okay? I'm sorry, that's just the way it is, okay? You gotta praise Allah or you can't publish a book in some countries, right? This is the exact number of New Zealand stick insects where the big ones are, and genera is difficult to establish. They don't even know how many there are. Can they play dead? When all else fails, play dead. A threatened stick insect will abruptly drop from whatever, whenever it's perched, fall to the ground and stay very still. 
This behavior called thanatosis can successfully discourage predators. A bird or mouse may be unable to find the immobile sub insect on the ground. How did it learn to do that? Stick insects. Stick insects are the world's longest. 2008, they found a new one, 22 inches long with the legs extended. That's a big bug. Uh, I was still waiting for your atheist to step up to the plate and tell me, how did this evolve? Bible says someday we're all going to bow down. Every knee shall bow to Jesus Christ. I'm trying to warn you ahead of time. If you don't want to listen, okay, but I'm going to warn you anyway. I want my hands to be clean judgment day. I say, Lord, they were stupid. I tried to warn them. They didn't want to listen. Lord, what else could I do? I got my hammer. I beat them. I beat their SpongeBob on the head. They didn't listen, Lord. He's going to say, Kent, you did the best you could do. He's going to, then he's going to be your judge. I'm trying to warn you, okay? Trying to help. I think Judgment Day, God's going to hold a simple walking stick in front of some of you and say, how could you be so willingly ignorant? Couldn't you see there had to be a designer? You really think the stick insects, all 3,000 species, came from a big bang where a dot of nothing exploded. Yep, a dot smaller than a proton exploded. I'm sorry, rapidly expanded faster than the speed of light and made them. Do hand grenades, they don't go faster than the speed of light. So they're not exploding either, are they? Bombs, the fragments aren't coming off a bomb faster than the speed of light. I bet, I don't think there's much of anything explodes on the earth, is there? Wow, we got to take that book out of the uh, word out of the dictionary. Let's see. You're insane if you believe in evolution. Okay, I'm calling you that to your face. And I'll do that in a debate too, if you'd like, call me. This is not science, this Big Bang stuff. This is a religion, the dumbest and most dangerous religion in the world. God created the heaven and the earth. In six days, God made it all. That's the only way it works. Atheists say, I will bow before no God and not surrender reason and logic. I will not surrender logic and reason to faith. You already surrendered to faith a long time ago. You take the Big Bang by faith. You take the uh, origin of life by faith. You take the idea that animals can produce different kinds of offspring and change from an amoeba to a whale. You take all that by faith. What do you mean you don't want to take it by faith? If you're an atheist, don't believe in God, you've already surrendered logic long time ago. You believe these charts. The human, the bird, the dinosaur, the ladybug, the pine tree, platypus, all of them came from an amoeba. Like that lawyer last night, Matthew Farrell. All came from a, came from a, a single-celled creature. After all, cancer cells can live on their own in a Petri dish. That's proof. All the many forms of life on Earth today are descended from a common ancestor. That includes a walking stick. Hmm. Yep. No traces of those events remain. I mean, we know what happened, and we're going to teach you what happened, and you're going to get graded on this, but we don't have any evidence. That's the whole translation. You've already committed, you committed yourself to this stupid family tree. It doesn't exist anywhere. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge, so God gave them up. I think God has given up on some. They think, oh yeah, my grandpa was a amoeba or a something, whatever. Protozoa. The mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength. I think if you show this to a six-year-old and say, did this have a designer? Well, yeah, it had to have a designer. Of course, after you've been to school for a while, you'll say, you'll realize, no, it didn't. Nobody designed it. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Here's the textbook. Let me back up there, brother. Uh, you really believe a biology teacher came from a protozoa? I mean, really? You believe that? Yep, the snails, the worms, the starfish, all of them. All of them. You really think it's reasonable and logical to believe a walking stick evolved from a dot of nothing exploding? That's your logic? You think you're smart, don't you? Every knee shall bow. Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. The things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It's appointed unto men once to die. You're going to die one day. The jailer came in to Paul and Silas and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'd like to see everybody do that. He promised he'd save you. Almost 55 years ago, I prayed and asked him to save me. He sure made changes. He's got a few things he's still working on, but at least he's in there working. How about you? If you died today, where are you going? Smoking or non-smoking? It's up to you. 
Jesus did his part. Now, ball's in your court. You have a physical birthday. We all do. You have a spiritual birthday. Have you been born again? If not, make it today, November 3rd, perfect day. Just say, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I believe you died for me. Would you please forgive me and come live in my heart and save me? Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you have to be born again. He said so. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have. Not might have. You have eternal life. Huh. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on him is not condemned. So when you get a spiritual birthday, when you receive him, you become a child of God. It's that simple. You're born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You get born again by simply receiving him. It's that simple. Born of God. So God's not willing that any should perish. I think he put all these critters out here, the stick insect, all their other ones. He put them out there just so we'd say, wow, there must have been a designer. How some of you can study so much science and get your advanced degrees and still come out believing in evolution baffles me. How on earth can't you see there's a creator? Okay, questions, brother, send them in. Then we're going to have a puzzle putting together contest to get on your name on the record board. If you want to come visit Dinosaur Adventure Land, try to break one of our records, become world famous, well, half a world famous, uh, come on down to Dinosaur Adventure Land in Lenox. Okay, what do you got there? Uh, funny you should say that, Kent. I've been a cherry picker all week, and I got a branch jammed in it and had to stand on the top to saw it off 20 feet in the air. I was rodeo riding when it... <laughs> Hey, I'll be 71 in a couple of weeks. I think I do pretty good with that chainsaw and that hauling logs around, don't I? Yes, sir. Don't, I don't I work as hard as these young guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, Stephen, on the fan page of yours that I run, Kent Hovind International fan page, some people got on my case for wishing all a safe Halloween. So I'm asking, do you believe Christians should celebrate? I certainly wouldn't celebrate it. I mean, you have to recognize it. Kids come around, it's a chance to give them a gospel track. Give them a piece of candy and a gospel track. But no, it's a pagan holiday. I don't celebrate it, but I certainly, if kids come, I'll say, hey, happy Halloween, and give them, a, you know, candy and whatever, okay? So I'd be cautious with the word celebrate. Okay. Hi, Doc. I'm not asking you to make a video on this, but have you ever heard of the zombie piece fish? The zombie pleco fish? No. You should check it out. Let me write that down. Zombie. I've had a few of those for students. Uh, P-L-E-C-O fish. All right. No promises. If I get time, I'll get to it. I got a long list of critters to do. Okay. Any creature on the planet would serve for my baking, baking, making baby series. Evolutionists can't explain any of them. None. Zero. Okay. Okay. You ever been in a laboratory where a mass spectrometer was in use to measure carbon-14 dating? I've only seen pictures and seen videos about it. Never been in the laboratory with it. No, sir. Okay. Oh, let's see, Dr. Oven, coming from a very scientific mind, what's your perspective on outer space and the moon landing? My personal take, I believe the moon landing did not happen, but feasibly it just doesn't seem possible, or did not just happen. It doesn't seem possible, given that space is something. Well, that's not a battle worth fighting. I think they did go to the moon, they landed on the moon, okay? And they realized that was a whole lot of money to bring back a rock, and we got a whole bunch of rocks already on the earth. Uh, how about let's just forget it? That's what they should do. The Bible says Eve's the mother of all living. There is no intelligent life on other planets, okay? There's not much intelligent life on this planet. Check the atheist channels. There is no intelligent life on them, okay? Good evening, atheists. Is your brain a poor design? Charles, I can answer that for you. Absolutely, theirs is. They think they came from a rock. Mm -hmm. Roger, how do I get your series of instruction? For example, the one talking about the removing of verses from the Bible. Uh, my video series number uh, seven, let me get that here. My seminar series is 18 hours long, or, yeah, and it covers all kinds of things. Seminar part seven is the DVD number seven, there's two of them in here, is all about those type of questions. Um, the, uh, don't get that snap back in. Seminar part seven is uh, altogether almost four hours long, commonly asked questions, including a whole section on why King James. We also have a lot of books on our YouTube, I mean, on our uh, website, drdiner.com, about why you better use a King James. The others have real serious problems. 
There you go. The errors in the King James Bible, New Age Bible versions. They're good at that, brother. Look at that. Just that. You flash through them like that? Yes, sir. Whoa. Okay. All right. Next question. All right, come join us for Dinosaur Adventureland, Lenox, Alabama. Come on down, it's free. Brother, you took the tour today. How'd you like it? Over there. And you took the tour, yeah. You took the Science Center tour also, both of you? And who else? The other, several families. Yeah, it's free. And it's a lot of fun. And free food. We feed you, house you, and then put you to work after two days. Okay, tomorrow night, 5 o'clock, we have a... Um, Politics and religion on Discord. Explain how the people get to it. Go to Discord. I saw a lot of Discord. Yeah. On Discord, go to politics and religion. I'll be on there at five o'clock. And again, there'll be questions and answers. Yes, sir. Uh, well, questions anyway. Okay. Puzzle contest at Dinosaur Adventureland in the day seven room starting in five minutes. See you there. Bye.